All right, you guys, as you know, where emotion goes, energy flows. Emotion equals energy. Now, maybe you've been familiar, maybe you familiarized yourself with Dr. Emoto's water experiment where they took water and under a microscope, they looked under the microscope of the water and when they had words like gratitude and love and joy, the water crystallized into amazing, beautiful snowflakes or crystals, water crystallizations. And then they had did the same with negative words like anger and frustration. And those crystals, they started uh, forming into ugly little water crystals. Now, what's crazy about that experiment is we're 75% water. So my question to you is, what is your dominating energy? Because where you're dominating emotion, because your dominating emotion is what's going to end up creating and dictating how you experience life. So first we have disorganized energy. So as Dr. Emoto proved, when you have disorganized energy, the water crystallization can't quite form into the beauty of who you are. So when you're driving down the road and someone cuts you off, what is your go-to emotion? Because listen, when everything's good, it's easy to be joyful. But most of us have a go-to emotion. Maybe when someone cuts you off, your, your go-to emotion is anger, frustration. Maybe you get sad. Who knows? You know, what is your go-to emotion? When someone calls you up and chews you out, do you retreat and get shy and feel as though you, you know, deserved it? Do you get angry and go forward? Start paying attention into your day of what your go-to emotion is because over the distance of your life, that's your that's how you're going to experience life. But here's the deal is if emotion is energy, it's either disorganized or organized. So this particular framework is going to give you tools to be able to figure out how to help you organize your energy. So what happens is let's say your, your go-to emotion is anger. So what's going to happen? You're going to start going into the emotion of anger. Your energy is going to get fired up. And what happens in anger is your body gets tight. You start to speak a little bit faster. You're forward in your toes. Your face starts to quit. You know, your eyebrows get the little wrinkle in between. You get angry. But what happens is, is your body is a muscle and it's tight for only so long. And what ends up happening is then it starts to relax and it goes into sadness and guilt and frustration and self pity. And then it gets angry again. All of that is disorganized energy trying to figure itself out to create that in the balance of a relaxed muscle. Anger is tight. Sadness is loose, trying to find the middle somewhere between the anger and sadness. You hit neutrality, but it was maybe only for a nanosecond where you could, where you couldn't actually um, experience and consciously pay attention to it. So disorganized energy. Well, what happens when you have disorganized energy and you have the willingness to look at that energy and this is what happens is when you have the willingness, then you get to move on to the next state. But when you're here, what do you do? How do you create willingness? How do you create willingness to change when that emotion of anger has you like, you know, strangled by your neck because you just feel so out of control. Now, I'm not going to say that anger, it just get rid of anger, get rid of sadness, self pity or anxiety of those, those difficult emotions because they have us strapped to our seat where we can't like, we feel as though those emotions are who we are and we can justify and we understand them and it defines that moment for us. And we then what happens is if you invite willingness, what can you do just for a second, just for a second today, when you feel as though that emotion has you just try, take two to five breaths. When you take two to five breaths, put your left hand on your heart and your right hand on your belly, close your eyes and just think of two things that you or one thing for all two to five breaths that you, you have gratitude towards. Now go back to anger if you choose when you're done with the breaths. But what I want you to know is that when you have your hand on your heart and a two to five breaths, two to five seconds, you think of something that you have gratitude towards or something that you love your heart and your brain vibrates at the same frequency 
and you have change. So when you're in anger, if you have, if you're willing to recognize that emotion is energy and you recognize that anger is disorganized and you're willing to change, step number one, take two to five breaths. Allow yourself to know that you're welcome to go back to anger. Don't try to change everything and control your emotions. Just for a second, just take a holiday for two to five breaths and be willing to just breathe with gratitude and love. And then number two is your body posture. Remember, we talked about sadness and depression, joy. Well, what do you think anger is? It's that tightness, right? It's like every muscle is so tight. So when you take the two to five breaths, if you're tight, loosen. Now let's say your go-to emotion is sadness, self-pity, and it's the weak muscles. You know, it's the give up muscles. Tighten up, feel your breath. Feel the ar- your muscles in your arms tighten up and breathe with gratitude and love like you're in control of that because you are. It's who you are. So body posture. And then always, number three, when you're done with the two to five breaths, what do you think that job is, is for you to do? Check in to your three words. Are you joyful, loving, and inspiring? Quick check-in. Remember, the goal is to rate ourselves at an eight or higher. Now, if you choose to go back to anger, go for it. That's your choice. But most of the time, nine times out of 10, you're going to go, you know what? I want to choose something different. What happens is you go into a state of confusion because you, that anger had you, you were angry for a particular reason. You had the willingness to change. It causes confusion. So what happens is if you go into internal dialogue of blame, like, gosh, why'd they cut me off? This isn't their lane. God. And you start blaming the driver or, you know, blaming other people to make yourself right. What do you think is going to happen? Bam, disorganized energy, bam, back to anger. And it's this triangular cycle. And maybe you can see it through this framework, how this happens. You're going to have triangles here. You're going to have triangles here. And what ends up happening is whole framework starts to build on yourself. So you, then you can start going into these situations, know that emotion is energy. It's proven by Emoto. So you have disorganized energy. You invite willingness by the three exercises. You go into a state of confusion. If you choose blame, by blame, I mean your toxic thoughts, such as they don't understand me, why me, what's their, why are they in such a hurry, jerk, or even worse, all the F words come out and you're cussing on the freeway, you got the middle finger flying at them, that's going to throw you back into anger. But if you're here in confusion and you're really ready to change and you understand, you're like, God, ugh, I'm like driving and you're frustrated, but you don't really understand, but you're like, okay, I just want to be able to change. You have the willingness to change. The next thing is get curious immediately immediate curiosity. So you have your first three steps here. The next step is curiosity. Curiosity of, gosh, I wonder why they cut me off. They must have an emergency. Make a positive excuse in your mind. Because listen, your reality of your life is only happening in your mind. So create a positive experience in your mind by telling yourself something positive. Maybe they have, maybe they didn't see you. Or maybe you can create curiosity of, have you ever done that? We all have. People drive and aren't even conscious that there was a car in the way. Accidents happen because it was an accident. They're not purposeful. So invite curiosity in. We don't know what's happening on the road and why people are driving the way they are. And also, it's called a deflection. So Let's say my husband comes home and he had a rough drive home. He comes home and he was all good on the freeway, but the negativity comes home and he starts to deflect his negativity from the road onto us. And we think we take it personally. So we start to blame, we get angry because of his attitude. And here we go back into the confusion world. How are you dealing with people with bad attitudes? Are you feeling as though it's totally because of you? If so, that's so selfish. 
Because here's the deal. My husband comes home maybe from a rough day at work or because of the road or because of a conversation or who knows, or maybe you have had a difficult day and you deflect onto your kids. What happens to your kids? Well, what happens is if you got to get curious about the situation, be like, hey, you know, do you need an extra five minutes? Are you okay? Did everything go okay at work? Is there something that you want to share with? It's not because of you. It's a whole, this world is a bunch of deflections. It's called disorganized energy trying to organize, bouncing off of each other, trying to figure out how we can organize this energy. Take responsibility. Be willing to organize energy. Be willing to be okay in a state of confusion. Invite curiosity into your life and boom, what happens? Organization. When energy is organized, you're in the flow of life. It's like jumping into a river rafting, um, a river rafting and going down river rafting and just jumping in and going down river. It's ease and grace. Do you bump into rocks every once in a while? Sure. You bump into a rock and down the river you go because you're in organized energy. You're willing to bump. You get curious to the rock. You organize the energy. Now, if you try to control the raft and try to get away from the rock, sometimes the, if you've ever been river rafting, the boat will like go on top of the rock and you're stuck because we over controlled or what happens is the rope bound, uh, the boat bounds around the rock, maybe because you got two different people on either side of the boat fighting against each other and the rock holds you there because why we're fighting with anger and blame and in disorganization. So stop controlling. Now control is such a bizarre word because what I'm saying is dictate your life. Now dictate your life is different than control every aspect of your life. Down river is jumping in and being okay, bouncing up against the rocks, looking with curiosity and the willingness to change, to understand where you are and why you're going there. Because ultimately the goal is to find neutrality in life. When you're driving down the road and someone cuts you off or kindly allows you in neutral to both. You don't have to like, wow, thank you. Thank you. And over be generous and overly have graciousness because someone let you in just neutral, you know, thank you. You know, gratitude, move on. Someone cuts you off, send them love and light for God's sake. People need more love and light. Send them love and light. Drive on your way. It has nothing to do with you. The point of this whole entire framework is for you to understand that 75% of your body is water. Water is energy, which is your emotions. What emotions are dictating you on a daily basis? Do you sit in sadness and frustration, anger, or guilt, resentment, joy, which energy, what emotion are you dictating your life on? It's got to be 80% or higher. That's the energy that I'm looking for. Maybe you're just subdued. That's not neutral neutrality. The undercurrent of neutrality is joy. It's aliveness. It's enthusiasm for your life of who you are. And the spark is there. So disorganized energy, get, be willing to change so you can get into a state of confusion, invite confusion into your life, with the answers of curiosity by asking yourself curious questions. So then you can get organized and then you are free to neutrality. So check out the homework and there's an exercise to help you work through this framework. All right. I'll see you in the next video.